Before we get started with the talks that we have prepared for today, we'd like to introduce uh, the president of the Fern Lodge Board of Directors, Betsy Anumu, who will share some readings to get us started. Thank you, George. I'm Betsy Anumu, president of the Fern Lodge Board. And on behalf of the board, we'd like to welcome all of you who are here in, in person and those of you on Zoom. We're here at beautiful Valentine House and we're all delighted to be here. Let's start with some readings. From the Bible, John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And from Isaiah, arise, shine. For thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see. The sun shall no more be light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God, thy glory. And from Luke, no man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when mm -hmm. thine eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, the, thy body also is full of darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. And from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Truth and love enlighten the understanding in whose light shall we see light. And this illumination is reflected spiritually by all who walk in the light and turn away from false material sense. Light is a symbol of mind, of life, truth, and love and not a vitalizing property of matter. Science reveals only one mind, and this one shining by its own light and governing the universe, including man in perfect harmony. Truth destroys falsity and error, for light and darkness cannot dwell together. Light extinguishes the darkness, and the scripture declares, there is no night there. To truth, there is no error. All is truth. To infinite spirit, there is no matter. All is spirit, divine principle, and its idea. In science, all being is eternal, spiritual, perfect, harmonious in every action. Let the perfect model be present in your thoughts instead of its demoralized opposite. This spiritualization of thought lets in the light and brings the divine mind, life, not death, into your consciousness. Spiritual vision is not subordinate to geometric altitudes. Whatever is governed by God is never for an instant deprived of the light and might of intelligence and life. 
We are sometimes led to believe that darkness is as real as light, but science affirms darkness to be only a mortal sense of the absence of light, at the coming of which darkness loses the appearance of reality. So sin and sorrow, disease and death are the suppositional absence of life God and flee as phantoms of error before truth and love. And from Prose Works, First Church of Christ Scientists and Miscellany. It rejoices me to know that sick, soothing sorrow, brightening this lower sphere with the ways and means of the higher and everlasting harmony brings to light the perfect original man and universe. What nobler achievement, what greater glory can nerve your endeavor? Press on. My heart and hope are with you. And this is from Message for 1902. As a drop of water is one with the ocean, a ray of light, one with the sun, even so God and man, father and son are one in being. The scripture reads, for in him we live and move and have our being. Let's have a few moments of silent prayer, followed by the audible repetition of the daily prayer. Thy kingdom come, let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. Thank you. And now we're going to hear from the Fern Lodge Administrator, George Strong. Thank you all so much for being here. <clears throat> we're looking forward a little bit later to an inspiring conversation between two of our dearest friends. Annalisa Cronman and Patricia Brugioni have been, well, they're both experienced Christian science nurses. Both have served at different times on the Fern Lodge nursing staff. And Lisa is now a journalisted practitioner here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, Patricia is just a delightful Christian science nurse who travels from place to place, fills in at facilities and in people's homes wherever there's a need for Christian science nursing. I am so deeply grateful to both of them. And you will appreciate the conversation they'll have with each other, I know. I would like to share with you some significant changes that have been going on at Fern Lodge. Brian Stock, our operations manager for 12 years, along with his wife, Jamie, who's tended to our information technology services and functions, have moved. They are now serving in our sister Christian Science Nursing Facility, Ten Acre, near Princeton, New Jersey. We're grateful that they have this progressive step available to them, but we miss them greatly. Although I would have to confess that we probably miss most of all their dear son, Evan, who was growing up in our home and at Fern Lodge. So, <laughs> <laughs> But I will say we're deeply grateful to Tiffany Hale, a member of the Hayward Christian Science Branch Church, who has stepped in and taken on the responsibilities of operations manager Tiffany is such a blessing to everyone at Fern Lodge and such a joy for us all to work with. And so we feel there has been no backward step at all, just another progressive step forward for everybody. Our dear friend Clovis Hughes, our bookkeeper and office manager for many years, retired as of the end of September. We will miss Clovis very much. She kept us all in line. <laughs> But I will say her strong sense of organization and her thorough communications has made it possible for us to have a pretty easy transition to our newly hired bookkeeper, Susha Wexler, who is a longtime friend of ours and works from her home in the St. Louis, Missouri area. Seems to be a seamless transition, going very well for the last two weeks anyway. <laughs> I can't adequately express our gratitude to Allison Cook 
She's been steadfast in her work in the Fern Lodge office, helping graciously wherever and whenever we need it most, and easing all of the transitions through this Fern Lodge office and operations as we've seen these changes. And finally, Deborah Mesmer, our dear friend and director of Christian Science Nursing, has moved to Southern California. This progressive step for her and her family led us to consider how we might find a new model of organization for our Christian Science Nursing Department. And we're happy to say that we have hired an experienced Christian Science nurse, Marjorie Dalla, <laughs> to serve as assistant director, working very closely with Sharon Strong, who has once again lovingly stepped in to fulfill the responsibilities of director in our time of need. I believe Sharon will introduce Marjorie a little later also. And I will say that through all of these changes, our dear family of friends, and specifically Rosa Leal, head of housekeeping, Anna Burke, head of food service, and Ben Cahill, head of maintenance, have been steady rocks for us all to depend on and have kept the facility running smoothly, well-maintained, good food on the table, and everyone at Fern Lodge has been counting on their dependability and they just have come through so well. So as you can see, it's been a busy year for us, full of progressive steps for everyone. Yes, there've been changes in our staff, but we always remember that these steps are evidence of progress for the individuals and for Fern Lodge, and therefore they must be wonderful, and we are grateful for each one of them. We remember that no matter what else is happening at Fern Lodge, we maintain our purpose, our dedication, our devotion to the daily expression of divine love. We offer a haven of soul. We provide a place where Christian science healing is practiced and demonstrated and where those who need care may come as they pray for healing and have what they need to support them. They will have full support for their reliance on God to meet every single one of their daily needs, just as we do. I come to the change of shift meeting every morning, at six o'clock, seven days a week. I do that because I love being at those meetings. I want to thank the Christian science nurses who work through the night and also the ones who are coming on duty for the day. Thank them for their spiritual inspiration, for the tender loving care they give, for the acknowledging divine love's ever presence in the facility, maintaining a healing atmosphere of soul. I am deeply grateful to each one and I am so happy to tell them every day face to face. We have some wonderful news and we have a request. In addition to the staff jail, oh, there it is, the hook. <laughs> <laughs> In addition to the staff changes, Fern Lodge has seen specific fruits of our prayers through many years. For a long time, there has been one major challenge for those who come to Fern Lodge to learn and begin to practice Christian science nursing, affordable housing. Recently, we were renting a house and a three bedroom apartment in Castro Valley just to provide housing assistance to some of the loving Christian scientists who came to care for patients we serve and to learn to practice Christian science nursing. The cost to Fern Lodge could be more than $6,000 a month. Last year, one of our neighbors on Madison Avenue, just five houses up the road from us, offered to sell us their home at a reasonable market price. A generous donor made the purchase possible. And now Fern Lodge has a place just up the road where we will be able to provide homes for up to eight of our Christian science nurses. Our meeting today is in the living room of that house, which we have named Valentine Home in honor of Emily Valentine, who served so faithfully during the first years Fern Lodge was organized as a nonprofit Christian science nursing facility. So now we have Fern Lodge named for Mindell Fern Cox, who founded the place in the first place, and Valentine Home founded for Emily Valentine, who got us going as a nonprofit. <clears throat> 
there's much work that needs to be done here at Valentine Home. We have begun that work and we are asking for financial assistance from our friends. The initial work will be done in three phases and the cost of each one of those phases will be about $70,000. We hope to have the whole project completed within about a year and we'll be deeply grateful for every donation we receive in support of this work. Now, it gives me enormous pleasure to introduce someone who has been essential to the ongoing progress of Fern Lodge, not to mention to my own happiness in my life. <laughs> when Dev Mesmer moved, Sharon Strong, you might guess from the last name, <laughs> my wife, <laughs> generously stepped in and has been capably and lovingly fulfilling the responsibilities, once again, of Director of Christian Science Nursing. And she has done this while at the same time, she has maintained her progressive work as Director of Christian Science Nurses Training, teaching classes at Fern Lodge and over Zoom links to Christian scientists across the country and beyond. Sharon, thank you so very much. I'm turning the meeting over to you now. Thank you, George. Well, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> As you can tell from George's report, uh, it has been a busy but fun-filled year, both with training online, as George mentioned, and here in person at Fern Lodge. I've been thinking about this passage from 1 Peter. From the King James Version of the Bible, it is, it reads, Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. In a number of translations, a phrase here and there sweetly amplified the meaning, so I began compiling them, which resulted in this new translation. I can't call it Strong's because that's already taken. <laughs> <laughs> so here's my mashup. Here's my concern, that you care for God's flock among you, that God has entrusted to you, exercising oversight willingly with all the diligence of a shepherd. See that your flock of God is properly fed and cared for, not because you have to as a duty, but willingly under God's direction, not calculating what you can get out of it, but because you are really concerned for their well-being and because you are happy to serve, not bossily telling others what to do, but tenderly showing them the way. Isn't that a perfect description of Christian science nursing in all its manifestations? From instruction in skillful care and ethical considerations to ministering in supervisory and mentoring capacities. So here's a brief recap of the training and instructing activity in our Ministry of Christian Science Nursing program since last October. All together, we trained 14 students, and seven of them are from Fern Lodge. In a level, sorry, in, Jan, in July, a level one beginning class of two students completed its classroom portion of training and are now happily working full time with patients. We have them here today, Josephette and Mandy. <laughs> Tuesday, we will finish our second level four class of the year. Level four, as a reminder, includes the ministries of supervision, mentoring, instruction, a thorough review of skills and ethics, and speech giving. It's been a great joy to be on this journey with these seven inspired and devoted Christian science nurses, and I will miss teaching them. I love their dedication, quickness, alertness, sincerity, good humor, love for God and man, and all their different accents. 
they became part of my family. And uh, Jared is here uh, today, for, and I don't see Maureen. So um, those were the two from Fern Lodge this year. So Jared. <laughs> In two weeks, a level three class will begin with four students and all of them on Zoom. In addition to all of that, there's been weekly and monthly tutoring for two new directors of Christian Science Nursing outside of Fern Lodge. I taught three 40-hour courses in a practical guidance for fulfilling the role of director of Christian Science Nursing course over Zoom to five journalistic Christian Science nurses in other facilities. This is a course I developed with some editing and input from my teaching colleagues. Currently, that course is being sponsored and organized by Tenacre over Zoom for 33 individuals who are relative, relatively new in that role, aspiring and preparing to serve in that role, or our new administrators in their facilities who are seeking to better support that role. This course is being co-taught by five instructors around the United States and one in England. We each chose several topics to present. That four hour class every Tuesday began October 4th and ends December 6th. Tenacre has tended to all the details to make the instructors part so easy. And are we ever glad about that? <laughs> A training opportunity came up this summer when I was invited to work at Crystal Lake Camp in Pennsylvania for two weeks. What a beautiful and healing environment to be in. Two of our students were able to train with me for one week each to gain experience working outside a Christian Science Nursing facility. And while there, two other students from two other facilities joined me for some mentored experience. <laughs> I'm so grateful to Mina Soriano and her capable mentoring abilities. Hi, Mina. She's watching on Zoom. <laughs> she helps make the transition from the classroom to the Christian Science Nursing Floor an easy one. Wouldn't you all agree? With her grace, sweetness, and love. Hurrah! Visas are finally coming through after 18 months of slowdown due to the pandemic. And since late last year, we trained Jacqueline DeBall of Toledo, Ohio, to help process our various religious worker visa applications. And hi, Jacqueline, if you're watching. In two weeks, we'll begin a level three course, which covers cleansing and bandaging, Christian science nursing in home settings, caring for children, and how to meet confidently and prayerfully situations that may arise suddenly. And right after that, we'll begin another level one class. So in case you thought we were just sitting around. <laughs> <laughs> On the director of Christian Science Nursing side, we miss Deborah Mesmer, our friend, mentor, and director of Christian Science Nursing. But as George mentioned, it's been fun and natural to step into that role once again and to make sure our sweet staff continue to feel loved and cherished. I let the staff know right away that I would really need their help in many ways, and they have provided it. Having taught over half of them in classes, it just feels like a continuation of the classroom training. I love being able to say, that's an excellent adaptation to meet that unique need. Well done. <laughs> so and Pam is just, Pam Litwiller has just finished her level four a mentored portion and has done such a wonderful job and was a great help to me in making out the daily schedules. Thank you. <laughs> We're so pleased to have Marjorie Dalla join our staff as Assistant Director of Christian Science Nursing. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. While her supervisory mentoring and organizational skills are most welcome. We truly value her humility, cheerfulness, and metaphysical response to everything. On her first day of orientation, she began assisting a patient as though she had worked here for weeks. We feel so honored and blessed that she answered the ad. <laughs> no idea, thank you. <laughs> and some of us are here too. 
I don't know logistically how that might work, but I will just shout them out. Uh, Sybil, Josephat, Jared, Noni, Mercy, Pam. Savina. For your dedication and your love, your, your support, we just well, couldn't do this without you. And I did notice that we have another Christian science nurse in our midst, Tajanati. So thank you for... I bet you'd like to hear about some, some healings. First of all, we're so grateful for our Christian science practitioners who, as well as our monthly practitioners who embrace us in the harmonious operations at Fernmont. As you might imagine, having an average patient count of about 18 throughout the year, there are numerous healings to report. Several patients were admitted who were temporarily unable to use the limbs on one side of their bodies. In a few weeks' time, all returned home, two healed and one able to continue the healing at home with minimal assistance from neighbors and friends. Among the other healings we have seen are a gash on the arm, which exposed a portion of the bone, closed quickly with no ill effects. Swollen and weepy legs returned to normal size and no longer need bandaging, enabling the patient to begin walking short distances in her room with assistance, then taking herself to the bathroom and giving herself care. This individual's vibrancy was regained. She said she had been in several different facilities, but that Fern Lodge had a sense of love and grace that had deeply touched her and facilitated all her needs. She transferred to a facility closer to her family, but with a tremendous amount of gratitude for all that she received from our staff. A healing of fear after a knee surgery prognosis. The patient was with us for two weeks, and this was her first experience with Christian Science Nursing. The staff lovingly and prayerfully supported her. She returned to the physician to have a brace removed, and despite his earlier expectation of negative results, the physician told her of the surprising progress, and she was immediately able to return home. I love this one. A former patient called us on the one-year anniversary of her departure from Fern Lodge <laughs> to express how grateful she was for our support. Character growth is a natural result of prayer and humility. One day, as a patient was praying for herself, it suddenly dawned on her that she was here to help those around her. She felt God was telling her to love her neighbor and pray for mankind, and that she was also at Fern Lodge to be a blessing. She began attending activities and shared inspiring testimonies and insights at our church services and Bible lesson study. Our dedicated staff continues learning and growing in our observation skills, our ability to see and love more deeply the perfect man when assisting patients who seem challenged with mental needs, such as confusion or even angry outbursts. I call these burning bushes, these observations. This careful observation and intuitive listening for what the patients are really needing is what Mrs. Eddy counsels us about in the chapter, Christian Science Practice in Science and Health. Quote, observe mind instead of body, lest aught unfit for development enter thought. Think less of material conditions and more of spiritual. Watching what we think is a demand to accept spiritual reality, right where material conditions appear to human thought. One way to do this is to remind ourselves to observe mind, God, and even use the seven synonyms to turn away from the observation of anyone's physical body, mentality, or personality. We accept the substance of spirit, not matter, the testimony of soul instead of material sense, the facts of truth instead of the claims of error, and so forth. Daily. Our work is to prayerfully see and genuinely feel the perfection that is the real nature of these dear ones entrusted to our care. One Christian science nurse shared that she needed to, quote, feel the beauty of the soul of this woman because the patient didn't feel everything was okay until she felt that. 
she continues, I needed to learn to accept the presence of divine love as her reflection, as being so real that a sense of God's precious love emerged within each of us. The blessing is that to truly love this patient becomes a time of feeling God's presence so powerfully that it comforts and lifts us both above any sense of doubt and confusion. I call her my soul sister now because I feel such a connection with her, even when she occasionally seems angry and out of control. When she doesn't remember me, she often asks, are you my sister? With all the affection and honesty within me, I tell her, yes, I'm your soul sister. And she feels that and is truly comforted. So we find in our work a daily freshness and renewal of this love being expressed as we minister to the human need, whether it comes to us as a need for a sense of value and worth, assistance with meals or mobility, cleansing and bandaging, or regaining mental clarity. This statement to her loved student, John Lathrop, <laughs> by Mrs. Eddy certainly applies to Christian science nursing. This work is not humdrum. It is repeating and defeating, repeating and defeating, repeating and defeating. The Ministry of Christian Science Nursing is the embodiment of strong scientific witnessing while tenderly caring for our fellow man. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon, so very, very much. Um, I would like to invite you now to a slideshow that we've prepared to try to give you a feeling for what Fern Lodge is like. And it's kind of taken both in the present and, and some of our, our quite historical pictures. So I, we really enjoy it. It gives a real sense of who we are. There's a yellow building, yellow house that you'll see in the slideshow. And, and that is the Valentine home where we are right now. So as soon as the slideshow is over, Patricia and Annalisa will have a conversation about Christian science nursing, and I know we're all looking forward to that. So thank you again for being here. My words did glow with the gold of sunshine, and my tunes were played on the hall of strung. Would you hear my voice come through the music? Would you hold it near as it were your own? It's a hand-me-down The thoughts are broken Perhaps they're better Left unsung I don't know Don't really care Let there be song to fill the air Ripple in still water When there is no pebble tossed No wind to blow Reach out your hand If your cup be empty If your cup is full, may it be again, let it be known. There is a fountain that was not made by the hands of men. There is a road 
no simple highway between the dawn and the dark of night and if you go no one may follow that path is for your steps alone When there is no pebble tossed, no wind to blow, you choose to lead must follow. But if you fall, you fall alone. If you should stand, then who's to guide you? If I knew the way, I would take you home. La da da da, la da 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 da, la da da, la da 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 da. right wherever you are <laughs> and hello everyone here patricia and i have been really dear friends for a long time mary baker eddy wrote the spiritually minded meet on the stairs which lead up to spiritual love and that has kind of characterized our friendship through the years as instructor and student, as fellow nurses, and as forever sisters in Christ, even as campmates at the Healing Foot Wash Camp at Burning Man. <laughs> and if anyone has questions that they want to ask Patricia or me or George or Sharon at the end, we're going to answer the best we can. So for starters, Patricia, do you have any ideas that you hope that people might take away from this conversation this afternoon? Yes, absolutely. I think the main thing is that love and light meet us right where we are, exactly where we are, even when we feel hopeless and can't do it and can't pray and have no hope that love meets us where we are. That as the Christian Science textbook says, the Christ really does come to the flesh and air and that the Christ does speak to the human consciousness and leads it and, and that consciousness responds and finds the way out. And that truth is a revelation. It's all in our books. There's a quote in Science and Health I just really love. And those readings to begin this meeting were just such a gift. Everything about light. I just, thank you, Betsy. <laughs> so this is from Genesis on page 503 in Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy. Genesis 1-3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Immortal and divine mind presents the idea of God first in light, second in reflection, third in spiritual and immortal forms of beauty and goodness. So there's an order there of what is presented and what that reveals, and God does it all. So that's what okay. I hope. Good. So I grew up in a Christian science family and going to a Christian science Sunday school, but I know you had a different experience, Patricia. And I wonder if you might give us a little bit of your background. I wasn't raised religiously, but I was taught to really think for myself and question. The answers weren't given away to me. It was if I asked, well, what is this? What is that? Well, what do you think? And I'm really grateful for that, actually. I think that's really essential, whether you're in a religion or not, that you find for yourself. I was always a deep thinker. The concepts I'd heard about God, I would try them on. I'd think about that a minute and I'd say, nope. <laughs> You couldn't promise me or threat me enough for me to believe that. And so I called myself an agnostic and went along that way. Had a lot family troubles that started from when I was about 10 and started drinking pretty young. And so 
yeah, was school, was drinking. So um, was drinking and not long after that, some mental health issues presented themselves. And when I'd go to the psychiatrist and I knew I had real things to work out, I could tell they were trying to figure out what pill <laughs> would, would help. And I could just see what they were thinking. And when they'd, they'd give me a prescription or something, I said to them, they'd explain how it worked. And I'd say, but, but this isn't real. And they'd say, well, what do you mean by real? And I re honestly, I didn't know. I mean, it's like good question. I, I knew it, this wasn't real, but it was a good question. And as Mrs. Eddie says, the, the question, what is truth convulsed them? So what is real? So in your teen years, it sounds like there was some turmoil mm -hmm. uh, happened. Did that get better? Did it get worse? What happened? Then? Yeah. So I went along that way for quite a while. I ended up having an eating disorder that was very severe and things, nobody could really help me. I couldn't help myself. No one could. It was very clear. The best thing to do was just hide, just try to hide what was I was going with because I felt no one could really help me. I ended up moving from, at a certain point, I moved from San Diego to up here in San Francisco. It was kind of a sink or swim move. Everyone's trying to help me so much at this time that, well, what I have to backtrack here. Before that happened, you can ask me later if you want to, but I ended up in jail. I was in jail for a few weeks. And this was in the midst of struggling with this eating disorder. And it was really interesting because I had been wanting to get into a treatment center. I'd saved my own money to get in and I ended up in jail. <laughs> and it was so beautiful because what ended up happening there was at one point I was in a cell with one other woman and we'd go to the courtroom and we would be chained up in this little room waiting our day in court. And one day I was in this cell with this other woman, never seen her before and thought I would never see her again. So why not tell this person honestly what was going on in my life? And we both did that with each other. We had hours and hours in this little room together. And so I told her honestly what, what was going on with me and my struggles with my eating disorder and, and everything. And she thought she was getting out that day. Well, when I returned back to the jail, I'd been moved out of that little room into the general population. And who was in the bunk? This woman. And she looked at me and she said, I'm watching you. <laughs> so I think this might all sound a little familiar as just the, the sweetness of what nursing is when we can see a need and something's watching us. So this woman would come with me to meals. And I would try to give away all my food and, and she would say, stop that. Like she just more or less just no. And she would say, eat that. And I'd eat. And then after my meal, she'd say, I'm watching, I'm, I'm watching you. And I, I'd get back, I'd get up on my bunk bed. And it was so profound. I think of that woman often because this woman was, was really being a nurse. She was being a nurse. She was meeting a human need. And she was prepared to meet that need. And I was prepared to receive something that no one could help me. And yet this fellow prisoner <laughs> helped me. So from there, the conditions of my getting out of this jail were that I go to this treatment center that I wanted to go to anyway. And I ended up there for six months. It was a temporary, got my head above water just a little, but it wasn't a fix. And I can't, and still couldn't drinking again, eating disorders. And everyone was trying to help me so much. I couldn't really think my own thoughts. And so I, I had this moment of clarity where it's like, and I think we all are familiar with that, what that might be like. Everyone's trying to save you so much. It was just like, I needed to go away into the wilderness to see what, what's even going on here. So I moved to San Francisco, got on the Greyhound, had a few bucks got a bed in a hostel in the Tenderloin in San Francisco, which if you is a kind of rough area of San Francisco and got a bed for like 11 bucks a night. And that's where I camped out and things got worse before they got better. I drank. I was just completely out there. There was no one that was kind of trying to help me so much <laughs> with all the good motives in the world, but there was a need to get beyond human aid to have a breakthrough of what does the helping and healing work. So yes. tell us a little bit about when light first came. So the light first came when I could not do it anymore. In the Bible, we read about Jesus saying of my own self, I can do nothing. That's a lovely thought, but how do you get there? How do you get there in your experience? And that's where I got to. 
I couldn't do it. I had been suicidal for years. At this point, I didn't even have hope in that. I was like done with even that. And I couldn't work anymore. I was just in a sort of transitional state of thought. I was honestly done. And so it was like the me that had been trying all that time temporarily just stopped. And in that place, I started seeing this light. It was just this light shining everywhere. And I felt connected to everything. I was like, it's like I'm connected by these little strings to everything in the universe. And the thought of being a healer came to me. You know, I didn't. Did you even know what that was? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 it was just, had no context for any of this. None, no, no context. I hadn't. I couldn't cross -re reference any of this to anything as far as I was concerned, just out of nowhere. I didn't know what it was as if, you know, when a, like if a butterfly lands on you and you don't want it to go away, that's kind of how I was acting. Cause I didn't know what was going on. It was like, don't disturb the butterfly <laughs> because it was, I was so in awe and everything was so quiet. I live there now most of the time, but uh, I feel that on the regular, but this was new for me. You mentioned mm -hmm. one time an experience you had shortly after this, just mm -hmm. walking down the street. Oh yes. So, so many things were dawning on me then. One experience I had that I'll never forget. I was walking down the street and just in this awe, it reminds me of that quote with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. It was like, I was just really paying attention. It was as if someone were standing right behind me. And this voice literally spoke in my ear and said, this is what the world looks like without fear. And then it was as if this hand, I didn't see it physically, but it was, I knew it was this hand that was coming and came and took like a door, a doorway or opened a door or swept away a curtain or a veil from my heart. And I was, as I, as this was happening, I was like, oh, this isn't coming off of my eyes. Something's being removed from my, my heart. And I would have said I was totally fearless, by the way. If you'd asked me if I was fearful, I'd say, I'm not fearful, I'll prove it. So this, this voice saying, this is what the world looks like without fear. And then something being swept away. And I just saw everything just bathed in light. And I was in the tender lane. A lot of homeless people, people with mental health issues, ranting and raving on the street. And I really saw everyone just bathed in light and love. And if I had read the Bible, so you can imagine my excitement later when I read these words, I, you know, it was kind of exciting that I was seeing a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. We're all home. We're all loved. No one is lost. And that the concept of, oh, you've got to save someone. What we're, we're all embraced right where we are. And so uh, quite a powerful, powerful, powerful glimpse. So how did you move from that when you were drinking and mm -hmm. suicidal, and maybe you weren't so suicidal at that moment, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the next step be beyond that? Well, this experience was so profound and I've had to kind of look at it in retrospect. I really wanted to share this experience. That's really what started to get my feet on the ground. I had to share. Uh, people didn't really want to hear it or didn't know what I was talking about, but I was trying to figure out what was happening. And eventually people got kind of frustrated with me and long story short, it was, they couldn't really sort it out when this kind of dawned on me. It was like a window experience. I couldn't sort it out or maintain it. I didn't have the tools to know how to maintain this light or this buoyancy. So shortly thereafter, I started struggling with everything that I had been struggling with again, but I'd had this experience and it had gotten my attention. And I'd questioned at the time, am I going crazy? And the thought was insanity does not have this kind of intelligence. That was, <laughs> that was the thought. I didn't use the words like God or love or anything, but light, the, I trusted that and intelligence that I, it was like, everything was saturated in intelligence. And so I knew it wasn't insanity. So at this time, it really, it was like a burning bush experience. It got my attention. It got me questioning. And now I was looking something in me was hungering and thirsting. It was looking for this and I was wanting to share. And I've come to realize that desire to share, like it says in the textbook, whatever holds human thought in line with un unself love receives directly the divine power. What I was experiencing was so good. I wanted to share it. That got my feet on the ground and really started opening the way, but I was still struggling with the issues 
that I had like drinking and, and everything was, I was kind of swallowed up in that again and drinking and then couldn't stop drinking. Was there a time that you wanted to be sober? Yes. I, I started to realize that I couldn't stop and I wanted to stop. And I kind of owe that to this experience because I'd had this taste of something more. Once you have a taste of something better, other things start to fall away. I wanted to be sober, but I couldn't get sober on my own. I started working at this restaurant in San Francisco where somebody worked that I heard from a friend, not by name, but somebody said, there's this guy, I call him my teddy bear and he's in this program and he's sober. And I was a roommate of this other guy and he, he was seeing my drunkenness. <laughs> and so he was planting a little seed, but this person was there. When I met him, we started to try to suggest anything. He didn't try to say, let's go to a meet. He didn't try to help me. He just listened and he said, oh, related. He shared his own experience. Oh yeah, da, da, da. it was equal, even. No, just a very, a sense of just heart to heart. And that gained my trust, but I was still trying to get sober. And one day we were on shift together and I divulged to him while we were working together. I said, hey, I said, I started drinking again. And he said, he just says, real, just, he's great. As long as you're having fun, like, not like in an arrogant way, but that's great. As long, like whatever. Yeah, cool. You know, what, as long as you're having fun. And in that moment, it was like the last <laughs> that shattered the delusion that I had been having fun. I still had this idea, like this was working for me, but <laughs> it was like this one moment shattered this deception. And I was just standing there and I was at the bar waiting for my drinks to go deliver to my table. And it was like seeing this, just the way, like it says in the Bible, the waste howling wilderness. It was like seeing this like dark, just vacant, just void. I saw him at work and just said, would you please take me to a meeting? And he did. And basically I was, after the meeting, I was kind of shown how to take some really practical steps of basically I was asked, can you do this on your own? Nope. <laughs> Might there be a higher power that can help you restore you to sanity? Uh, maybe. And then can you make a decision to turn your will in your life over to the care of God? And there was that word God, but I proceeded to tell her this whole experience I'd had with light and that had broken through. And after I was done, she said, well, could you consider that that might be God? And I said, whoa, that like, yeah, all right. I, or maybe we'll see, but I, I could, I was open-minded, you know, so sure. I'll, I'll give it a shot. And so after that, I really, it was just the, I was shown how to just start to take inventory, just be basically be honest instead of just trying to do everything myself, just be honest about my fear, ask God to remove, you know, my fear instead of trying to be so fearless and strong. And I got this all the time and just basically just be, be honest with another human being, really basic stuff. Like Mrs. Eddie says, honesty and humility. Christian science is honesty, humility, and love. So, so yeah. that actually help you to stop drinking. Yes. I immediately lost the desire to drink. About a month later, smoking fell away with without any effort. It was just done. I didn't want it anymore. And it makes sense because if you have something better, you drop what do, you don't need. Why would you it wasn't, I didn't, I, I always tell people I never quit anything. I've never quit anything. I've never stopped doing something. I've, I've tried that. These things fell away. As I'd read in science and health, the Mrs. Eddie quotes the Bible where think about withdraws, the king comes or withdraws the sun star and the sun's brave light, something like that. So these things that were lesser fell away as something better came. And so, and then uh, few months after that, the eating disorder, just this train that seemed to have been driving my life. The person I was working with said, have you ever sat down and just surrendered your fear in Christian science language? He who layeth his earthly all on the altar of divine science drinks of Christ's cup. Now I was learning to do that. I was just laying it down. <laughs> and so I did, and it was over. It was like that. It was almost like so simple. Like, really? It's that simple. Okay. So so how did, how did Christian science enter the picture? So in this, in this group of people that I was in, there were a number of people studying Christian science. One person that would have said, I am a Christian scientist. She actually worked here at Fern Lodge. So I was surrounded by people who were 
were studying, studying, interested in organized religion. So I would meet them at Whole Foods after church, meet them across the street. And someone in the, in this group one day gave me a science and health and said, I think you're really going to appreciate this one day and just laughed. Like it was just like this deep, <laughs> you know, which was kind of suspicious, kind of inviting, you know, you know, how it is. so <laughs> and, uh, like, all right, I, I see where you're, you know, I see where you're coming from here. And, uh, you know, we'd been meetings together for a couple of years. And so I took it and I would peek at it here and there. And I thought, yeah, I love like that, you know, but I hadn't opened, you know, just gone ahead and just opened it. During this time, this woman in meetings was gradually over the course of a couple of years, really drawn to something specific, not, and I knew it wasn't her like, oh, she's so great. I thought she was way too spiritual for me. So I didn't really talk to her much, but I listened to her in meetings and I just started to be aware of something deeper, something more rock solid, peaceful, something unmoved. And I had this, I re- I'll never forget in, in a meeting one day when it was like, we were all sharing and it felt like we're all in the boat in the ocean. And when the ocean goes up, we go up and the ocean goes down, we go down. But I saw this be, above and beyond her, th- like this rock coming from the bottom of the ocean and rising above the waves that wasn't in the ocean. And, but it was just there. And I was so drawn to that. And I ended up one day that, that noticing an attraction went on for a while. And then I, and one day I went up to her and said, you know, will you be my sponsor in this program? And she said, yes, sure. And we started working together and she never suggested I read science and health, but there was something about working together with her that it was just a deep, such an honesty. It wasn't like somebody trying to say the right thing. It just was like heart to heart sisters, like you're saying sisters in Christ. It was, there was a, just such a, just an honesty, a depth of honesty. And I'll never, I fell on my knees with gratitude, cried. And not long after that, I opened science and health from the beginning and started reading from the beginning of the book. I thought about this in retrospect. Like, what was it like? From the gates, it was like hearing a woman read the book to me. I felt like I was meeting the author, but it felt as though the teacher that had been with me for a few years, walking with me, showing me things, not saying a word, suddenly said, now we're going to have a conversation. (laughs) You're ready for a conversation now. (laughs) And the timing of that between the light and the book was about a few years, you know, it was a few years. It's, it makes it, there was an order there that was going on in this seeming chaos. Mrs. Betty writes somewhere that, you know, the chaos of mortal mind has made the stepping stone to the harmony of the divine mind, something that something like that don't have it marked, but just that, that general idea. And so, yeah. And, and so going through all that felt so chaotic. And yet looking back, it's like, Per, such a perfect order the preparation the one thing after the other and so I had now when that light first came I did not have a context for what was going on and now I'd had a few years of experiences that gave me now context so when I was reading these words it was like yes that's exactly what it's like <laughs> she puts it just so and this is you know it was and it was also like you know when you meet somebody that's really into what you're into and everybody's like can you please shut up and <laughs> like that's great you're can you can we take it down a little it was like meeting someone that was like really going into that depth and wasn't like whoa 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 this is too much it was a sense of kindred spirits and felt like meeting a true friend and fellow traveler. So your reading of Science and Health was that experience? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So did you start going to church or what? I mean, I read the book cover to cover. Throughout my experience, this light just swelling up and welling up into my experience. So as I was reading the book, it was like, there's that light. (laughs) And I just knew this is the truth. And so I started going to church and reading the book. Honestly, it felt like not so much like, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. It was like the, the analogy I'd like to use is it's like if you can't see your own nose, if you hold up, you have to see your own nose, you have to hold up a mirror. So the book was like holding up a mirror to what was already within me. It was already there. So it was, it was like an aha that was already within. And so 
all of this and it, and tr backtracking into that experience in the, when I was living in the hostel, the things that were coming to me, it felt, it didn't, wasn't like, didn't feel new. It felt very familiar. And so later I would read about the comforter is that which brings to our remembrance that's already within us. And I'll never forget one day sitting in church, I got a really clear illustration of the difference between like human intellect and reflection or understanding. For the very first time I was sitting and listening and it was like the reader read something and it was like something in me went, hmm, that's, that's interesting. I'm like, let me just take that. And I'll never forget. It was like my hand got like grabbed, like how a parent grabs the hand of a baby that's grabbing the wrong thing. <laughs> it was like, grab, it was like, no, you know? And the thought that came was thou shalt not steal, which is kind of a very jarring thought. And I at first felt a little stung and then I got, and I, I just kind of yielded. And then welling up within me was the message. It's already written in your heart. You're not going to even begin like as Mrs. Eddie writes that growth in Christian science is presented by a unfoldment, not accretion. And so, and that relates to everything, education, nursing, healing. And so the, I, yeah, so it was just like, nope, <laughs> we're not going to add a bunch of things. You're going to continue to watch this kingdom of heaven unfold from within. And yes. so in the whole pathway of Christian science nursing unfold. Yes. So kept, kept reading joyous, wonderful. I became good friends with a Christian science nurse who's here today. And we were, you know, we were like instant sisters and, but I wasn't thinking of being a Christian science nurse. I, uh, instruction, I just realized today the period between taking class and instruction and my first, <laughs> I just, this morning, I was like, finally connected the dots. I was like, whoa, that's, <laughs> that's deep. <laughs> when I first started, and I'll, I'll tell you how I got into Christian science nursing, but just when I first started studying Christian science nursing and was looking up all the little bit of training at here at Fern Lodge was exactly nine months. <laughs> I just, this morning, I was like, finally connected the dots. I was like, whoa, that's, <laughs> that's deep. <laughs> so, you know, it's um, because when I first started and all and everything, I loved the uh, looking at the reading the definitions of bride and Christian science nursing is like the bride and bridegroom coming together in that weddedness and that babe of Christian healing that we is, is the witnessing that's the healing. And I don't have this passage mark, but maybe most people here will, will recall what I'm speaking of, where Mrs. Eddie writes about the, the babe reaching out its loving to twine around the tents and call forth blessings infinite, and that this is the babe we are to cherish. And so anyway, so it was a really special gift this morning to realize <laughs> the timing of, of, of class instruction and nurses training was nine months. So it's, it's just even noticing that order there when anyway, so, so I, I started as the year went on and I having this desire, I had a relationship that didn't work out. And I, that was an instructive experience where I said, God, I don't want my love. I want your love. Teach me to love divinely. I said it out loud. It was just this moment of parting, like I letting go of, I, I wanted to learn how to love divinely. And wow. When you ask that question, <laughs> when you really honestly pray that it's just the, an the answer comes and shortly thereafter. So I started having, after I had those thoughts, I started having this desire to just learn a few nursing care ideas. Like, oh, wouldn't it be, I think, feel like we all should know how to take care of each other. I mean, pretty basic stuff. Just I like why we should help each other. And I was always, always a worker, always in service. And that was just a natural thing to want to do. And the first Christian scientist I met would actually send me in the snail mail to Fern Lodge Focus and which was lovely to people's woman Sharon straight. I'd been to a lecture here. And so I, I knew what uh, I knew what she looked like. When I went to my very first, she was there as a guest. I, I, I had gotten good at noting. And so I, I, you know, I said, Oh, okay. So I, I walked up to her and I said, you know what I'm asking, but, um, love to learn a few nursing skills. And she, a couple of weeks, as you heard from the very rigorous schedule, <laughs> that's not a rare thing. <laughs> so yeah, there was a class starting in a couple of weeks. She said, it's just five days and you're welcome to get a And I said, great. And I showed up um, for my five days 
And, and you were still working at Scottless. Yes, time, I was right? a waitress. Yeah. Yep. I, you know, started, uh, basically started studying so many of the things. I mean, it's really common sense stuff, the practical aspect, but the spiritual, I mean, just the spiritual translation of everything, rubber hitting the road. It just was like, whoa, because I was just flying off in the metaphysical clouds. Like I was just out there. And this was like, all right, we got our feet on the ground and we're going to help people. And I love that for somebody, I just can go in so many directions. And so the grounding of care and focus where you're just doing that one thing is just, it's just profound. And so, so, so I, I have a question. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I actually had the privilege of, of helping Patricia learn her first steps in Christian science nursing. And it was such a joy because, as you can tell, Patricia is a, an unusual person of <laughs> joy. We're all unusual. But um, it was like having this little bird in your hand and you just don't want, you just want to make sure you do it right. And so a fun time as an instructor, just thinking, what is the best way to help her? Mm. And I remember well, one, one time we were, I was getting ready to, it was time to learn about a bed bath. Frequently, the way that that happens, as many of you may know, is, okay, this is how you do it. You demonstrate it and, and students kind of catch on and say, oh yeah. But in this case, I just said to Patricia, so here's your assignment. Someone in bed, they can't get up. They need to be clean, including washing their hair. The bed needs to stay dry. How would you do it? Very. <laughs> and that was super fun. <laughs> super fun. Just to kind of think through, there was another student there and it was Fern Lodge, but what would be in a house and what can we work with? And we got a trash bag and we got towels and towels in the edge of the trash bag and we cut a little corner off the end and we cut off of a bottle off and made a drink made a you know a little drain I mean it was it was a you know oh, it was kind of like a scavenger hunt. it was it was a fun around. scavenger hunt it was yeah. super fun and did the bed stay dry not all the way but no. it, was, it was you know I mean <laughs> you know <Yeah>. oh, okay <laughs> do you <laughs> that's so, that's great i love it yeah and so then after that we actually did did uh, figure out a few other improvements yeah. on that and, and it was a, beautiful to watch a teacher being a teacher you know that was actually when i read science and health the first thing that broke through for me about jesus i was a little like Ugh, about jesus because that whole idea of jesus being like kiss my ring bow down to me that's the concept of christ jesus i had and so when, when I read science and health for the first time and realized, oh my gosh, he's a teacher. Like that was the breakthrough for me was he's a teacher. Oh, oh, I could see the te how he was teaching. And so I, as you were doing that, doing that assignment, it was just like, oh, it was appreciating, but I was like, you're just being a teacher. <laughs> that's your, that's pretty. So yeah. And so we learned other things. I mean, it was also super fun to is to do things. I mean, I love to dive in and be like, let me show you how to fold a fitted sheet or, or whatever. It's just like, just these, just little things. So yeah, it's wonderful to start out with, you know, what do you, what, what's the, the symbolism of what do you already have in the house? What's with, the, what's already with, what and do you have to work with? So not from the house, not only what yes. materials you have, but yes. consciousness. consciousness yes. as well. Yes. Okay. Let's move forward a mm -hmm. little bit. Yes. So in your nursing practice since then, have you still felt more of that light leading you? Yeah. Um, so actually right here at Fern Lodge, not long into my nursing, I was, went from in the classroom, on the job training to working. It was a quick, quicker, quick transit. And it was a lot of, you know, a lot of work and I was doing a lot. I thought, Ooh, you know, sometimes it wasn't, it wasn't easy. And I would, feel, and I was working with this woman at one point. And it, she was somebody, it didn't seem like conversations were, she, conversations weren't happening. And so it didn't mean seem, she wasn't, she wasn't talking. She wasn't talking. Yes. Yeah. It seemed like that was not possible. That was not, she was not communicating in that way. But as I worked with her, experienced all of these beautiful qualities that were just nurturing me, that were support, that just felt so loving and supportive. It's just this joy, this this unself love and all of just all of these beautiful started to realize it's the light. I just God, the Christ, but I realized, oh my gosh, 
this is this individual that I'm experiencing. They're not, it wasn't, you know, we tend to think, oh, it's this animated sense or what we're saying and communicates, but it's so much more. And that was so profound to see that I was, I was meeting, I knew her, I was meeting her, I was engaged, fully engaged with her. And so one day while I was giving her care, I just expressed my gratitude to her. And I just, just said, I just want to thank She said, I'm kind of new at this. And sometimes it's hard. And sometimes I, you know, sometimes I just said, but when I'm working with you, I just feel so much love and support. I said, and I just said, I want to thank you for your, your joy and your gentleness and your affection. I said, so helpful. And it was like, I'll never forget. It was like watching somebody come up from the bottom of the ocean and just swimming right up. And she looked me in the eyes with just like full, just her full self. And she just said, thank you. Just thank you. And I think that, that realization that no matter what we seem to be in our human experience, no matter what, we are what we are and that that's a blessing, like that purpose is going on and doing its work. It's not dependent on human capacities and faculties and abilities that it's, yes. it's really what we are. So hey, about another experience of it. Yes. Is. So um, when I moved out to Chicago and I was working at this, uh, it was a in, in a few homes called Harmony at Home. It's, it's just at this point, but I was in this house and there was no one uh, else in the house. And I was the only nurse um, came into the house. And now I've kind of reflected on this, like if I'd been, if there were a lot of other people watching, what would have, I might've done something differently, really on it, just to be perfectly honest. And so, but it gave me a really clear example of, of what's possible when we say, what, just, just you, God is, you know, that there's nothing else going on there. And that Christian science really is a place that we can, it's nursing is a place that we can cherish this. So she came in and if I were looking at her from a humanly what way, I might've said, let's take care of this, that, and the other thing. I'm trained to do that, but I didn't. What I was aware of was this. And it was such that such a saturated sense of light that I just walked with her into her room. I sat down and I didn't do anything. I sat and I listened and she was just looking up and she was just like, I was so in awe. It's like, whatever you're seeing, I'm seeing. I mean, whatever you're looking at, I'm, I'm seeing that light too. And I her, you know, at some point she went into the bathroom and she had a little dressing she needed to take care of. And I didn't say, oh, geez, let's get some different supplies for you. I just let her, she had a way that she'd done it that had worked for her. And she just got her little things and she made a new little thing. And I just watched. And I maybe helped her a little to get her, get her pants up or whatever. We went to the room and the whole time it was like that, this, this watching and, at, and, and that it was just a beautiful time. I'm sure I got her something to eat. I mean, I don't remember. I, this is what I, the next time I came on my shift there, the, the, at the change of shift, there was a report of, oh, she's not, this is her state. She's not doing so she's not eating or she's, she's in this state that was a little this unresponsive. Where, yeah. Unresponsive. So in my room and I, in, in instant health, we read about, I went to the bedside, I you know, and they rose and dressed those or whatever. It wasn't to that I walked into the room and I stood there and I literally watched the color come back to her cheeks. She, the sound changed in her breathing and she opened her eyes, said hello, and said, I'd like something to eat. <laughs> and I thought, what am I seeing? It's just like, whoa. Now I wasn't praying. I wasn't, I mean, it was specifically, I wasn't, I was literally just witnessing. And that was something that consistently I'd come for a few days and I'd go away and I'd come back and I would come in and I would watch that go on. Like I would, I remember one day I came into the room and something felt troubled. Something felt off in the room. And I just, I didn't say down. And I said, I don't know what this is, but God make me transparent. And I just shut my eyes and I got real quiet and I just yielded and just let that veil part. And there was that, that, that light showed up again. I could just see that light. And at that very end of the light, what came just this realization was this light is your child. And at that very moment, 
when that declaration came, she took this deep breath. She goes, oh, thank you. <laughs> like that. It was just like, and I thought, you know, and I mean, and I wasn't thinking about her, you know, I was just just in my thoughts of God at that point, but the timing, and I thought it gave me a lot of food for thought. It's like in, in science and health, it talk, talks about man is re man and reflects the central light of being that we don't live in a body. Imagine you're in a place where you're trans, you're realizing I don't live here. You, you've, you've emerged to, oh, my body's, you're, you're not there. Nobody's, you're not in the sepulcher and everybody's trying to, feed you and do all these things to you. I mean, imagine. And so I, I fully understood her, thank you, of the stone being rolled away, the weight being rolled away, being looked for where you're not, you know, where you're not. And so, yes. Okay. So I have a question. Do you think that at that point, because there's a lot of, of questions in nursing, sometimes nursing practice, like, what's the difference between a practitioner, what the practitioner does, and mm -hmm. the nurse does? Mm -hmm. Do you think you were being the practitioner at that moment? No, no. I mean, I was not giving her a treatment. I mean, really, I would, and I was, I was witnessing, which all healing is witnessing and reflecting. So, no, not at all. I mean, I think of <laughs> there's the seamless healing and what that what our activities are together, and but it really is centered on that vis spiritual vision and seeing, and that was what was going on. So no, what do you think just from your point of view now? Well, yeah, that's a really interesting question because having been a nurse for over three decades and now being in the practice of Christian science nursing, uh, time in training, as many of us here know, the role of the practitioner and the role of the nurse and how the, the nurse shouldn't kind of step on the toes of the practitioner, or sometimes the word is interfere with the practitioner's work. And I thought, oh, this will really give me a good opportunity to see what is that all about? And what I discovered really quickly was what does interfere with the practitioner's work are the same qualities that Mrs. Eddy says, a nurse should not be these things. It's on page 395 of Science and Health. And it says, complaining, deceitful, complaining, deceitful person should not be a nurse. And I thought that's what interferes with a practitioner's work are those qualities of thought, which are not seeing man as they should be, mm -hmm. uh, either the patient or themselves or their coworkers. Mm -hmm. That is what turns. Right. And I think some of the suggestion of like wh whose work is whose comes down to the belief of hierarchy, like that there's like the, 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 the model of there's the priest and there's the, yeah, like yeah. that there's a religious order. So it's that, yes, that so, interfering. So but, what yeah. I came to see in my own practice is it's much more like a team, like yeah. we're all on a team. Mm. The nurse is, is on the team. Mm -hmm. The patient or the person asking for help is on the team. The practitioner is on the team. Um, and I had a great experience of that one time in my, when I was still practicing as a nurse. Would you like to hear about it? I would love to. Uh, <laughs> well, so this was not an man who had been thrown from her horse, uh, up by paramedics, and they were very concerned because they said she had a broken neck. Places they felt that if um, she moved inappropriately anywhere, that she might just be a paraplegic, mm -hmm. not be able to move anymore. She was a Christian scientist and she wanted able to be moved over to the facility where I was working. And so when we came or when she came, we very gently move off the hard board that she was still on, that she had been on for the last 24 hours, move her off the hard bed board and onto a bed. And one of the things that happened in that instance was she had a great desire to be healed. She was motivated. The second, she had a practitioner who was really very directly with her. And, and it just seemed like the appropriate thing at that moment to only have one or two nurses that would be in that room. So there just wouldn't be a lot of stuff going on. So every day she would be in touch with her practitioner, be a little conference between the three, but the practitioner and the patient were all on the same page as to kind of the next step then 
she would do it. And actually, she was always the one that initiated it. So one day she said, but I... so, so she did that. And then it was the next day, let's try six inches. And she would just go up a little bit more. And then I was like, you know, that was fine. Let's, let's try a foot. <laughs> uh, and, and so there she was, was just working to see that this injury didn't define her and she didn't, wasn't governed by just matter, even though it looked like this was pretty severe. Um, and she'd been there maybe literally about a week. And I was her nurse. And um, she said, you know, I would just like to sit up on the side of my bed. So I said, okay. I think she'd been in touch with her practitioner that morning. We raised the bed the whole way and she put her feet on the ground. And she said, ah, that feels really good. She was sitting up straight, no support behind her. And she said, I, I would like to stand up. <laughs> so I, there was a walker there in the room. So she stood up with a walker. She, I'm going to walk into the bathroom. <laughs> and so she did. And she left that facility walking in like two weeks after she had been warned by the paramedics, don't even think about moving because you might injure yourself permanently. So that was, that was a huge watershed experience for me to witness as a, as a nurse. But it also illustrated to me how those elements working together, it wasn't like there was one more important than the other. All three were essential and they had different roles, but they were all supportive. Mm -hmm. So that, that was a really helpful experience wow, that's beautiful. for me. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking up a little bit mm -hmm. in case people have any questions or might be ready to go home. But before mm -hmm. we do that, one of the things that I'm interested in, in doing is seeing how can these thoughts translate to someone who isn't a Christian science nurse, doesn't, doesn't call themselves one, but... Is this, is this just for people that are listed in the journal or that wish they yeah. would be? How, no. how about that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely not. I think that this is like within all of us and we are all equipped to meet the need. And of course, I loved a letter that I got the other day from the Christian Science, from the Mother's Nursing Activities. It says, what is it? We understand best that which by educators. That's by Mary Baker Eddy and under the Board of Education. I don't think I've ever read that before. And, you know, what begins within us and brightens into birth, you just think of, okay, what doesn't, all the tr all that's true begins within us. Like Jesus said 2000 yen and again to people who had no religious training, he was said, the, you know, it's your faith has made you whole or it's, it's heaven in you. And he recognized, nurtured that, he nursed that, and he, he brought that out until the individual saw what that was and was able to practice it. And so somewhere else, Mrs. Eddy writes that Jesus required neither cycles of time nor in order to mature fitness for action. Sorry, I can't tell you where that's from, but we all, I mean, we're preaching to the choir, you know, having a conversation with the choir here. So, but, but um, did you just, have, yes. Did you have one quote oh, that you wanted? Was I going to share that experience on the freeway or? Oh, um, yeah, I, yeah. Yes. I'll share one, one more, more one more experience. So just, just a couple of years ago, just speaking of people who just that anyone, any of us can be equipped to meet the need. Two of us who'd been out at Burning Man had come home and in the city, we we're in out in San Francisco and we were on our way home and we had power, profound experience of unity and serving and washing feet together. And we were having a conversation about situations that seemed turned out and incidentally, and my friend was talking about how he'd had a friend of his that he thought was in a, in her birding lot and gone to her door and was beating on the door. And then he couldn't stay in there because of the flames came out. And then it turns out she wasn't in the house. We all know the symbolism of that. She he was out on the lawn thinking he'd left her to burn in the house and on the lawn came up behind him and she was fine. He was telling this whole experience. And as he, this experience, we were rounding the bend in the freeway and we see a car askew and we see another car flipped on its head 
you know, flipped over and a woman that had been thrown from the car on her back and um, in the freeway on the freeway. Yes. And this is late at night. And so we, we didn't discuss it. Didn't talk about it. Like the hymn says, let us, let us like them without a word, <laughs> rise up and follow thee. We did not talk about this, what we're going to do, but we pulled over to the side of the road. And by the way, one person is a student of Christian scientist. The other is, is not the three of us jumped out of the car. We went right to the woman and it was like, we just embraced her. It was literally like, just enveloped her we, one on one hand, one on the other hand, one at her head. And uh, speaking the words, so, some wor reassuring words of truth. My friend noticed that that up against the window had had fun and hit the window a book that the title was Walk with God. And this, <laughs> and this woman was looking right at it while we were with her. And when we'd come up, she was just speaking, you know, just gibberish. Calmed down and she started breathing normally and gave her my dust, dusty coat, took it up, you know, put, 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 put my big dusty coat on her dusty from being out at burning man desert and then the pair and we got out of the way and we did their and we went off to the side of the road and and oh and this this scrubs on she was a kaiser nurse and so we went off to the, the side of the road and we went from afar and jogs over and he said i wanted to tell you guys she is going to be just fine and it was just it was just really beautiful she just was just it looked i mean really coming up up to that scene it was like be prepared kind of like be prepared for what you might be encountering here you know, tragic little moment. Well, it was just the very opposite. So I love how that illustrates that, you know, we can just anyone, anyone, we can just anyone can do that. Yes. 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 So let's wrap this up. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know you have a, a special or a wonderful citation you want to give. Yes. I think there were a couple, just a couple. Um, here oh yes so you know just kind of where I began the speaking about being in a very hopeless seemingly hopeless place um, I just love that you know man, no matter where you are in your you, you you've lost something or you you're just have no ground to stand on I identified it with it since I read it it's from um, fidelity in uh, um, miscellaneous writings by Mary Baker Reddy. do human hopes deceive is joy a trembler? Then, weary pilgrim, unloose the latchet of thy sandals, for the place where that on thou standest is sacred. By that you may know you are parting with a material sense of life and happiness to win the spiritual sense of good. Oh, learn to lose with God. <laughs> Sounds so easy, right? Oh, yeah. And you find life eternal. You gain all. And I've, I love this too, about the simplicity of, you know, what does the places where it's just the sense of just learning where you're looking. And I love this in, from the apostles in, in science and health. It says to mortal science seems at first obscure, abstract, and dark, but a bright promise crowns its brow. When understood, it is truth's prism and praise. When you look it fairly in the face, you can heal by its means for, and it has the light it, and it has for you a light above the sun for God is the light thereof. So. Thank you for this lovely conversation. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, if anyone has any questions, uh, either here or on Zoom, we'll be here for a little bit. And if it's for George or it's your turn. Okay, yeah, I will. I have a question. What, what brought you to Glenmont? Oh, so hang on a minute. So the question is, what brought, brought her to Glenmont or Fern Lodge? Uh, where, where are you now? Where oh. are you now? Oh, where am I now? Yeah. Well, I I often go and, and work at Sunland these days oh, okay. in San Diego. Oh. Hi, anybody from Sunland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but I have worked at Glenmont. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I'm from San Diego originally. And so I often go and, and work at Sunland these days, but I have worked at, at Glenmont. So, yeah.
great. And it looks like we have Ken Jerry Gidenson has a question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So thank you both. Um, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. So George, you have a 6 a.m. meeting. You you well, this is open to questions for both George and you guys, right? Or Sharon. So George, 6 a.m. meeting. What about the 2 p.m. people? Don't they get to meet with you? <laughs> Hang on just a sec. Asking Ken, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I, I leave the two o'clock shift to the director of nursing. Of nurses train. I, I started doing the six o'clock shift because for quite a while, our uh, doctors of science nursing were not morning people. Gotcha. Okay. I am. Very good. I am. And I, I was, I, I would be at home. Actually, I was, I would be at home and I'd be studying and praying and it'd be, I'd wake up at somewhere between three and four most mornings and I'd just be doing that. And then, and after doing that for quite a while, I just said, huh, you know, there's a, there's a Christian science nurses meeting at six. I could just go down and, and say thank you to everybody. And just took a couple of times and I've been doing it for years. So it's been great. Oh, thanks. Well, thank you to all those at Fern Lodge, uh, as many of you know, was there for two and a half years and now is a little closer to our home, but uh, for all of your um, your love and support during those two. And a half years. Thank you, Ken. Anyone else here in the room have anything they would like more on? Okay, let's hear it. Hello, can you hear me? My name's Deanna. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. So thank you, Patricia. I have kind of followed you on Christian science, different things and whatever. It's so inspiring to me, your whole story, because it's kind of like mine. But um, I, one thing I was thinking about what you were talking about, what you said, I think in my last association, was that science and health written yet. It was, you know, it's like, stuff like that like we all have gods available to everybody <laughs> right. um, christian science is a practice that is is so beautiful that that brings it to where we can do something but it is not i had to learn like if i didn't have get christian science it didn't mean that i wasn't loved it didn't mean that i couldn't practice it meant that i'm learning how and that you know the law is set up and and um i don't know if that makes sense it's it, it kind of like just loved what you're talking about like we're all really practitioners and so we're practicing something all the time <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yes and, well i um, love i i love it i feel like with you know it it, it really does all come from within and then it's like new friends in books and i mean whether you're meeting face to face or you're meeting in a book you're meeting fellow travelers and it's like you can share with one another that's how i feel with science and health it's like it's the truth but it's also the truth that's it's somebody sharing their experience that was the first thing that dawned on me reading science and health was i knew my whole life was speaking from experience or not i could tell it a mile away and when i first re read science and health i felt it through and through this person is speaking from experience right and it was like meeting a person so i feel like yeah, it how wonderful that we have this book. Thank God, Mary. Big thank God, and Mrs. Eddie, that she wrote this book because it gives it just is super helpful. <laughs> I know for myself having this breakthrough. I mean, I got some tools, but it was like unwieldy, and so um, for it. But I feel like yeah, it's it is there's from within that then is led to more a, a structure. It's like being led home, being led to this haven. You know, kind of like. You're, you're, right. You're and, and, and you know what? It's, it's not about organized religion yeah, now. Right. I mean, it's it's about Zeti. I mean, what she did, I mean, the gift that what, what I have seen so much and it's happened to me too, and I'm working through it is this misconception of like, you know, this religious dogma, this whatever. And it's a, that's not what it's about. And it's so cool for a lot of people to of this. I say that from like, you know, my whole life being raised in it and practice and whatever. And I just, I just really, I, I'm just really getting now that God is just love and everywhere. And it doesn't matter what you're, whatever place you're in, you just, you know, try to express it. And, and, and it's just, I don't know. I, I just really appreciate you. Um, I just happened to pick you up on zoom and um, 
there are some changes that are going on that need to be and people are will receive it more as people practice more of just that genuine, just really the laws about that gentleness and that's what I think. But so thank you. Kind of like thank <clears throat> you. I will overturn, overturn it. Which has been on my wall of my office since my second day. Yes. Yep. I love that. And something I wanted to bring up with that, just a side note, with like with that veil being lifted, like we all have, I don't have to look it up in the book, but the definition of of veil in and health about the lifting of the veil. Yes, we get, we get these glimpses of the truth, but in that definition of the veil, it's that which I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it really quickly here. I um, mentioned a bit of a wall somewhere because the first day I was in Christian Science Nursing, Emily, if I just here, hang on a sec, so Zoom people can hear it. Um, the, the the first day was in Christian Science Nursing. Um, Emily Valentine, for whom we have named Valentine home, and whom I respect more than I can possibly imagine, um, showed me a few simple nursing tasks, told me that the most important thing was that I was me, and then quoted Ezekiel. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it until he come whose right it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that's like the first thing I learned about nursing. Yeah. And I have, like I say, since I've had an office, that's been written on the wall. So it's been yeah. a long time. <laughs> I love that. And so like, it, like that really relates to like, to this, the definition of the, in the veil, it talks about that uh, the, uh, the, the martyrdom veil of the temple, the veil, like this lifting of the veil that begins with a glimpse, it rends the veil of the temple. And it goes on to say it revealed the false foundations and superstructures of superficial religion. And isn't that exactly what that talks about the overturning the superficial sense of anything, you know? Religion tore from bigotry and superstition, their science, immortality, and love. So that's the carrying out of that lifting of the veil. It's like anything, you know, there's there's a progression there that that really breaks, keeps breaking through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry, where was that reading from, Patricia? Just really quick. I, that was excellent. It's a it's the in the glossary, was... it's the definition of veil. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. And I believe there are some goodies on the table. <laughs> I have a question. Oh, yes. You can't. Here's a little word from our sponsors. <laughs> you can see this at fernlodge.org and come visit us sometime. Oh, and if you wish to make a donation, you're invited. Okay. <laughs>